stem and leaf plots. Before we do so, let's go over our previous lessons over bar graphs and dot plots. The bar graph below shows grades students earned in a quiz. What fraction of the total number of students earned an A? Eight students earned an A. Express in simplest form. Well, so let's see the total number of students. Eight students who earned an A, 10 students earn a B, six students earn a C, three students earn a D, three students earn an F. Let's add this up, 18 plus six is 24, six more, 30 students in all. Eight students earn an A. Express this in simplest form. That means four out of every 15 students, or four fifteenth of the total, earn an A. So what is stem and leaf plots? So let's look at this. Seems like stem is on the left, leaf is on the right. It seems like there is a partition, a line here that separates the two values. Let's see, ages, data, three, key. Let's look at the key. Two dash five means 25. From what I can tell, it seems like they split up the two place values. The 2 and the 5, they split it up. The 2 is on the left, the 5 is on the right. How do you get the data from the stem and leaf plot? So, I see a 41, they split up the 41 into two parts. I see a 43, they split up the 43 into two parts. I see a 45, they split up the 45 into two parts. So, how do you get the data from there? From what I can tell, you have a number, you can use they seem like they split up the values. They seem like they put the tens place on the left side and the ones place on the right. So they're just splitting it up. And then to come to read it, you put them back together. It's like gluing them back together. You put the zero to three together makes three. Zero and eight together makes eight. Zero and nine together makes nine. Twenty-three right there. Two and seven. 2 and 7, 2 and 7, 2 and 8, 2 and 9. 30, 30, 35, 36, 39. Yep, there's all the 30s. In the 40s, see we have 41, 43, 45. In the 50s, we have 53, 57, and 102. You put the 10 and 2 together, it makes 102. So how do you get it? You split the data. You split the tens place from the ones place. Or even the hundreds and tens place, you separate it from the units place. The ones place. So, um, I'm not going to do this one. The stem and leaf plot below shows students' test scores. You know what? Let's interpret the data. If I combine the 1 with the 8, 18, 23, 25, 30, 36, 42, 43, 44, 45, and 50. According to the plot, how many students are in the class? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 students. According to the plot, what is the maximum score? 50 is the, oh, these are test scores. They didn't do very well, did they? 50 was the maximum test score, unless it's 50 out of 50 questions. According to the plot, what is the minimum? 18 is the minimum. Minimum is the number for least, maximum ending. So in case the question asks, I don't think it is. What is the range? What is the spread between the least, it's going to minimum to the maximum? What's the spread? So you just subtract 50 minus 18. And I believe that is 4 minus 1. 32 is the spread. According to the plot, between which interview most of the students score? Or most of the scores between the, in the 40s, the teens, or the 30s? Most of the scores are in the 40s. There's four of them. Number five, according to the plot, how many students scored below 30? Below 30, below 30. One, two, three. There are three scores below 30. According to the plot, how many students scored above 45? Whoops, above 45. So is it including 45? No, it's above it. One score is above Use the stem and leaf plot about the monthly temperatures in Dallas and Houston to answer questions one through six. So I see the scores right here. So we have uh, 
43, 47, 48, 56, 57, 66, 67, 73, 77, 81, 85, 85, and so on and so on. Let's see what we have to, what to interpret. Which city has the lowest data value? What is that value? Uh, 43 right there. Dallas has the, Dallas, which is 43. Which city has the highest data value? What is that value? So which data is the highest? Let's see, 81, 85, 85, 80, 82, 83, Dallas again. They do have like extreme temperatures. Have you ever been to Dallas? It gets really, it's really, really cold. Right now, I think they're having an ice storm. But then in the summertime, they don't have the cool, I mean that cool, <laughs> the warm uh, Gulf breeze coming out of the Gulf of Mexico. Which city temperature, temperature, which city's temperature data has a range of 30 degrees? Where is the spread of 33 degrees? Let's see. 43 is the minimum. 85 is the maximum. That is the spread of, whoops, 42 degrees. No. 83 is the maximum. 50 is the minimum. That is the spread of 30 degrees. So it must be Houston as a range of 33. That's the spread from the lowest to the highest. Next one, number eight. Which city temperature data has a median of 69? Oh, goodness gracious. I'm going to do Houston first. 50, 54, 54. So as you see, I, to be honest, what I should have done is I should have written out all the data in the first place that have saved me time. But I did not do it. Now I have to pay for not doing that. So there are all the data. Let's find median is the halfway point. Cross out three to the left, three to the right. Cross out one, 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 one. What is the halfway point of 68 and 70? 69. So it must have been Houston. It is Houston. Uh, which city temperature data has a mode of 85? Mode is the number that occurs most often. I see no 85 here, so it got to be Dallas. And I'm not going to do the next one because I don't have a calculator with me. But if I had the calculator, find the mean monthly temperature for each city. So Dallas, I would get all these numbers from Dallas. I would add them all up, divide by 10. Then I would add up all the Houston numbers and then divide by 10. Because remember, mean is average, was adding up all the numbers, dividing by 10, by how many numbers there are. And so uh, I, it can't, I do not know what the answer here is. All right, so let's answer some questions now. Um, I'm just going to C. I don't care for the C. But I do like the other three. Which of the following statements is supported by the data shown in the plot? I see 37, I'm going to write it out, 37, 39, 40, 48, 50, 57, 59, there are no 60s, surprisingly, 70, I think they forgot to put that down, 77, 78. So again, how do you get this? You're combining the tens place to the ones place, you're gluing it back together, and you need to draw like little, it's almost like distributed property, isn't it? All right. A, more months out of the year in temperature are warmer than 60 degrees. More months out of the year. So, let's see, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. Oh, these are the months. So, more months out of the year in Richmond are warmer than 60 degrees. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. No. That's half of a year is 6 months. This is less months, so it's not A. The mode <coughs> for the monthly temperature is zero. Let's see, the mode is... I don't think there is a mode. It's not zero because you're saying that it was so cold that in Richmond, Virginia, it's so cold that it's freezing all the time. No, it's not a thing. So there is no mode. So it's not B. D, there is, well, you know, I'm going to do C. I'm going to C. It's a valid question. I see. The temperature in Richmond is never in the 60 degree range.
True or false? False. Because if you think about it, you're saying to yourself that these are the monthly temperature, monthly. So inside that month, are you trying to say that it's never, ever going to be 60 degrees? So that's why it is false. So these are the monthly normal temperatures. So I guess they took all the temperatures from like from February 1 to February 28 and they averaged it out and that is what they averaged they got. But you're trying to say that it's never ever like in that month, it's never ever happened to be 60 degrees. So that's not true. So let's look at D. There is about a 40 degrees difference between the highest and lowest normal monthly temperature. The highest was 78. The lowest was 37. If I subtract this, it is, there's a 41 degrees spread from the minimum for the maximum. There's a spread of it. It goes from one extreme to the other extreme, so it has to be D is the answer. So what we're talking about here is stem and leave is. Stem and leave is another way to categorize numbers. A large, you got, got a, a large group of numbers. So you can categorize it from least to greatest, and then you split it up from the tens place, from the ones place. And then you can interpret the data. You can find the median from it. You can find a mode from it. You can find the range, the spread from the highest and the lowest. You can even find the mean from it. You can find all kinds of it. You can find how many uh, 40s there are, like like certain set of numbers, and from that stuff. So that's how you can interpret data from a stem and leaf plot.